Hi, my name is Anna Merrill, and I just wanted to share um, an important part of my life, my story. Um, when I was a young child, I had to wear leg braces. My husband calls them my Forrest Gump braces. Um, it made it really difficult. My feet were completely horizontal from each other, and I had a tough time walking, and it caused all my joints to just be basically ripped apart. Um, but it helped my bones and muscles grow together correctly. So that was a plus. But over the years, by the time I turned 21, um, they told me I'd have early arthritis, and it did. It started about the age two, three, for having my joints so stretched out. Um, but by the age of 21, because I was getting older, starting college, sitting a lot, the, um, all the pains and aches just completely set in. And I was in so much pain that I had to start getting cortisone shots. And that was probably every three months. And then also on a daily basis, I had to take ibuprofen about three times a day. It was 800 milligrams. So I lived a very um, medicinal life, <laughs> you know, stuff that's going to you know, have side effects that I worried about. But at this time, I had six children to take care of. So you can't worry about what's going to happen in the future. you got to worry about the now so I could take care of my children and feel good. Um, out of the six kids, we adopted two big boys, which I love dearly. Um, we adopted them when they're 14 years old, and they're now 22. Um, it's helped them. They have all their great stories of how it's helped them. But the, um, the part I wanted to focus on is that out of my four at home, three of them have cerebral palsy. Um, I started taking the product, I want to say about, it's been almost two years now. I was just on the beach in California and came across the ABC. And I don't remember anything about that investigative report except that it said arthritis. And my husband said, you're taking this. <laughs> so um, I did it hesitantly because I had baskets and baskets of vitamins, minerals, everything that everybody's approached me with to be taking, literally baskets. And so I was hesitant, skeptical, frustrated, just one more thing, more money to spend. And so I took it and I wasn't very faithful. Um, so it probably took me a little longer, I think. but. It took me from May to October, because it goes in and repairs your body, which I understand now, the cells, and um, by October, I felt better. Um, that's when I realized when they called and asked if I needed a cortisone shot, that I got to say no. <laughs> and that was, that was incredible, and probably since then, I've maybe, and it's been about a year and a half, two years, oh, a year and a half since that moment, I've only taken ibuprofen a handful, you know, just maybe like five times in that amount of time. It was three times a day before that. Um, and then the part that means the most to me, because of course we always need help as moms, but I didn't understand what oxidative stress was at that time. And when I started to understand what oxidative stress was, I talked to doctors. So I decided to look up PubMed.gov, because that's what I was told to go to, it's a doctor's site, and I put in oxidative stress and cerebral palsy. And when I had done that, it came up saying that in saliva alone, they have higher oxidative stress. They, they didn't even do blood tests. It was in the saliva alone. So that's when I realized, I almost, I felt really selfish at that point because I've been taking it a year already, not knowing my children needed it. And that was tough for me to realize. So right away I got on the phone with another doctor and they told me to give my children a half a pill. And along with that, I started them on a half of Axio as well. And um, the part that I haven't told a lot of people, they had um, ADHD medicine. You know, one had Ritalin, one had Adderall. And they were also on my other daughter's asthmatic. She was a preemie and had lung disease. So we were in and out of hospitals, doctors, appointments, surgeries, you name it, therapies. Um, so I put all of them on it. And um, they were all on Singular, steroids that you have to have to jumpstart your lungs, Flovent, Albuterol, Flonase, everything. And anyway, <laughs> by what I've understood from all that is they've been able to come off their Ritalin, they've been able to come off their Adderall, um, they're doing better in school, they are off all their steroids, all their medications, and it's been the neatest thing to get to, and I've had the doctor's supports through all this. Um, so I have all these little side stories. My one daughter, who is now eight years old, she was six at the time. Um, she was still just barely walking with, not even walking with crutches, she was either crawling or she was in a wheelchair we were carrying her. And it, and she also was having a strugg struggling reading. We were trying to get her high frequency words, is the, of, you know, all those kind of words. And she was only at 10 words, but when we started her on this stuff, I wanna say it was about 10 days later, the 
teacher actually called me and said, what are you doing different? Um, your daughter just got 52 words. <laughs> and that was exciting, because I've been doing flashcards with her, we're teachers ourselves, and to be working with your daughter when you're a teacher and not have that success, it was really hard. <laughs> and then, not only that, is my daughter Charlotte, um, she doesn't hardly use her crutches anymore. She puts them in the corner of the room with the classroom and she actually gets around the school pretty good without her crutches. Um, and I know that we've seen a huge difference with just the functioning of the brain and the enzymes. And I know the neurologists have talked a lot about the enzymes needing to be repaired and taken care of and that's what that's done. Um, my one daughter with asthma, lung disease, she's, um, I think maybe used albuterol twice this whole year. She was using it every few hours a day and if we didn't then she was in the hospital because she'd catch anything that was huge to me because you were about all these side effects of all these medicines but you're trying to help them live <laughs> so that was huge to me and then to start seeing my children walking they still use crutches um, but they're only in their wheelchairs for long distance I'm talking like going through the malls and Disneyland type long distance um, but just the progress that they've made has been incredible. Um, and then another little tidbit on my kids is they went in for their follow-up surgeries and things. They're supposed to get tubes in their ears. And I, it wasn't a mistake, it was a choice I made, but I didn't put my little three-year-old who has to roll policy on it because with their muscles, they already choke on all their food going down. That just sounded traumatic. And so I hadn't, but we went into the doctor's appointment my two girls, and he asked, of course, what medicines are they on, and I was able to say they're off all, but they're on her tandem, and, um, and he didn't even think anything, he didn't say anything, and then I um, checked, they didn't need to get tubes, and they'd been getting tubes over and over and over, and, but my little boy had to get tubes still, and it was interesting to me when the doctor said, why is he not on protandem, and I just said, I told him because it's hard to get it down. He goes, well, you need to get him on Protandum. And he had told me his wife and him had been on it for over five years at this point. And so he said, you need to go find someone, make sure he gets it. So I did. That was August. And my little boy has a gait trainer, the best way I can explain it, like a little old man's walker. Um, and I want to say from August to October, he started taking steps out of his walker. I've been trying to teach this for my, to my kids for years. My daughter's 12, my other daughter's you know, seven and my other son's, you know, now four. And they're making miraculous steps. The neurologist is, of course, totally excited. All the doctors are involved. Um, they're doing studies on it for what else they can help for mitochondrial disease. Anyway, NRF2 has changed our family's life and we just got started with NRF1 and we can't wait to see what happens there. <laughs> I am excited, I'm beyond words. So that's our exciting story.